Hello there, YouTube. Devin here again. Second video of today. Well, filming it for today. I'm filming this after doing job one and two on my lunch break to jobs three and four. I'm um, here on Saturday, so by the time you're seeing this, I think I'll set it to go up at Sunday at midnight, so Sunday morning at, you know, 12 a.m. Um, so this is a playlist that I'm People are always asking me during, you know, Mike B's live streams or my live streams what I'm drinking because I tend to enjoy a libation uh, after work and stuff like that. So I figured this would be a very cool um, set of new playlists to do where I uh, openly uh, try stuff and just give an impartial review of it while, uh, while here on video because people are always asking me what I like and I'm one of those weird kind of psychopaths that can pick out a lot of the different flavors and flavor profiles in a lot of alcohol, at least for the stuff that I like, um, which tends to make a lot of the stuff that I like more expensive because it actually has better notes and it's more well-balanced and stuff. Um, so today we're actually trying something I don't know if I'll like, um, but it's very adjacent to something I like, which means I, I probably will like it. Um, so one of my, my, my actually only really bottle of wine that I recommend to people all the time is the Taylor Fladgate uh, Fine Ruby uh, Port, um, and my local liquor store was doing a wine sale. Um, so today uh, we are going to try a Fine Tawny Port. Now, I guess the only difference between Tawny Port and Ruby Port, from what I understand uh, about wine, which is actually not all that much other than all the kinds and kind of the regions they're grown in, um, is that Port, uh, you know, Tawny Port and Ruby Port are made from the same grapes and the same process, but it's just where they're stored um, to age uh, is the only difference thing, whereas a Ruby Port is going to be stored in a either a steel or concrete container to age where it cannot um, come in contact with any uh, oxygen or um, other materials that are going to, to touch the alcohol in any way, which is why it comes out such a nice sweet red color. Um, Tawny Port, I guess, is aged in wood barrels, um, which I guess is going to affect the color and probably the flavor a little bit. Uh, wood tends to add a lot of tannins um, which are kind of bittering and or flavor agents to a lot of alcohol, for those of you who don't know. Um, so depending on what kind of wood it's in and if it's been used to store another kind of alcohol or if it's been charred or not, you could actually get an incredibly different flavor and color combination. Um, nearly limitless possibilities when it comes to stuff like that. So I figured we're going to try this here and we're going to smell it, we're going to taste it, and we're going to see if it's good, and then I'm going to put it up for you guys, and if you guys are interested in trying one yourself, um, that would be really, really cool. So first off, we're going to take a look at the bottle. It's a really, really simple bottle. Um, as you can see, Taylor Flygate there, you know, 1692 is when the company was uh, started. Um, it's a product of Portugal. Um, so, uh, I think the grapes for this, uh, winery are all grown in the Douro Valley, which is in Portugal, and, um, it has a seal right up there that goes all the way over the cork, as you can see there. Um, you probably can't read it, but it says, I'll read it to you here, um, by appointment to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, suppliers of port wine, Taylor's Port, Portugal. Um, so it's bottled by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth of the House of Windsor. It has her seal on it, which is that little picture right there. Um, because, uh, the royal family, for those of you who don't know, uh, tends to really like port. And historically has really, really liked port. And one of their favorite brands has actually been Taylor Fladgate, who's, which has been one of the longest, um, continuously owned family-run wineries in the world, I guess. You know, 1692 is nothing to shake a stick at. Um, that's very, very old. Um, but let's give it a try. Now, you don't need a, a corkscrew to open these, which I really, really like, actually. Um, they, they put this awesome little grippy part on the cork. It's a little plastic top there. So, um, so I do know a little bit about wine because I don't like to think of myself as kind of an alcohol snob, but kind of a higher class. I do know that when you are sniffing and tasting alcohol, you want to pour um, to basically just below the widest portion of the glass. Um, so we're going to take a look here. 
Um, it's kind of, it's red, very red, but it has a tinge of, uh, a tinge of brown to it. Okay, which is, uh, it's not quite as red as the ruby port, but it's still a red wine. It's, it's very red. Um, now there's three things that if you are drinking wine or the wine that you like, um, smells like, you should probably quit drinking it. Um... And one of those things is acetone. You don't really want to smell that kind of very alcoholic, like rubbing alcohol. Um, another thing you don't want to smell is like wet cardboard, um, is oftentimes what a lot of people describe it. Um, or kind of like a moldy, mildewy kind of smell. There's, there's, those are kind of some of the big red flags that the wine isn't good. Um, so before going into smelling it here, that's, that's just some stuff for you guys to know. Um, so now we're going to get our nose in there, kind of swirl it around to, to aerate it a bit. Okay, it smells very fruity, um, which a lot of wine tends to smell very, very fruity. But um, if you have smelled a lot of wine before, um, it can change. This, this smells very sweet, um, very, very fruity, not actually like grapes, um, kind of like fruit. Um, uh, in general, kind of like if you've ever worked in like a, a produce department and you've smelled like the, the rotten fruit bin, um, it kind of smells like that. It just kind of smells like fruit, you know, like, um, and then you get the sweetness and then it has kind of this florally woody type smell to it, um, which would make sense, um, giving the fact that it's a tawny port, um. All right, so now we're going to go here and we're going to taste it. And I've never had a tawny port before, but I have had Taylor's Flygate Ruby, so I hope this is the same, uh, very similar in flavor profile. Okay. That's um, really good, actually. Um Port is a very, very strong wine, for those of you who don't know, it's actually one of the sweetest classifications of wines too, so if you're not a very dry wine person, um, port is a really good wine to start on if you're trying to get into wine, because it is very sweet, but it is also a very high alcohol content, um, so it will uh, it will mess you up pretty good. Um, this is 20% alcohol by volume, this um, wine is. Now, port is considered a fortified wine as well, um, so most wines are usually fermented up to anywhere from, you know, 6 to 12%. Most wines are. Um, obviously, you're going to have Moscatos and other stuff like that that are much lower. Um, but most wines are going to be basically between 6 and 12%, with kind of some exceptions. Um, once you get over 12%, you really start to reach the fortified wine territory, because that's about as high as wine can get naturally before you start ruining the flavor. Um, in alcohol, it is about 16%. Um, so after that kind of 12%, you know, stuff starts to get a little rough. And then after 16, it, it kind of starts to, to get really bad. You start to taste a lot of really off flavors. Um, and, um, this tends to be, you know, into the fortified wine territory after 16%. And oftentimes what that is done is you make a bottle of wine up to 12%. And in this case, they... They make wine up to a certain percentage. I'm not sure exactly. Um, there's probably something out there where you can find out what they do uh, ferment it up to as far as alcohol percentage goes. And then they will add a, I believe they add a neutral grape spirit um, to bring it up to 20% alcohol, um, which is also why you do not store uh, port uh, like most wine like this. You store port upright because it... Um, is actually better to, to store it standing because it is a fortified wine. Um, so, but it, this is a very, very good. This is very, very good. It's not quite as sweet as the Ruby Port, which I, I kind of like. Ruby Port is very, very sweet. Um, and it does kind of have this almost kind of like tea-like, very woody, tanniny taste to it. And like I said, that makes sense because tawny port is stored in wood barrels. 
And you can taste that. I can taste that difference between the ruby port and the tawny port, um, which is really, really interesting. Um, it's very, very good. It's very refreshing. This is room temperature. Um, I usually like to have port with like an ice cube in it too. I usually chill it and put an ice cube in it and it's even more refreshing then. Um, but this is really, really good. Just room temperature even. It's very, very good. So that's been my review, I guess, of my first time trying Taylor Floodgate, uh, fine tawny port. Um, so if you are looking to pick one of these up, I highly recommend you do, especially if you would like to get into wine. Um, or if you're looking for a present for somebody who is looking to get into wine or, or somebody that you think would like wine, this is a very good introduction into that. Um, it'll mess you up, which is kind of nice. Uh, and stuff like that, but it, it's not, it's not overbearing. It's not too dry. Um, and it, it's, it's really tasty actually. Um, so it would pair with a lot of stuff. I'd consider this more of a dessert wine. Um, so you would pair it with other sweeter things. This isn't really like a meat and potatoes type of wine. Um, but it is very, very good and very, very pleasant. I'll, I'll be finishing this cup off camera, but hopefully you like this video and you subscribe if you like this sort of thing. Um, hopefully, if you haven't tried this, you go out and try it. I highly recommend it to you guys. Um, there's going to be more videos like this, whether people watch them or not. So that way, when people do ask me, I can refer them to this thing and they can get my honest reaction and see me, you know, drinking it up front and everything like that. Uh, more of the harder alcohols, I'll usually try a shot first, uh, give you the tasting notes and everything like that. Uh, and then we'll probably make a cocktail with it. But in this case, the wine, I think, is a very good start. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, you subscribe if you like this sort of thing, and please leave comments, questions, concerns, suggestions for future videos down in the comments. Um, you could always, uh, if, you, if you want me to try something, by all means, throw some money into my PayPal with what you would like me to go buy, and I will go check it out uh, if I can find it, by all means. I'd very much love to get recommendations on beers and wines and, and uh, other types of alcohol to try. Or, or if you got something from your hometown or something that's made in your hometown, you'd like me to get it, that's the best way to do it, um, is to just throw, throw a couple bucks at me, like the cost of what it would take to get one, and I would very happily go go get one and try it. So thank you all for stopping by and I will see all of you here in the next video.